Hi everyone, this is Emily from the Great Plains Nature Center. We are still closed, but we're still wanting to give you guys some awesome programs and some educational, fun, wildlife stuff that you can take home. Hopefully you can use this with your kids too, which would be really cool. Um, we will be putting this on Facebook and it'll be there so you can keep watching it. It will also be on our gpnc.org website in our isolation station folder so that you can continue to check that out there and keep watching it too. So today we're going to be talking about my absolute most favorite group of animals, animals they are awesome, and that is going to be frogs and toads. And we're specifically going to be, of course, talking about the ones that are here in Kansas, in the Great Plains, um, because we've, we've got quite a few species and it's about that time of year, or is that time of year, rather where they are coming out, they are calling. I've already heard quite a few um, these past couple of weeks, even since it's been kind of warm a lot of the time and uh, pretty wet too. So this hopefully is gonna help you to learn more about amphibians, uh, specifically frogs and toads. And I'm also gonna teach you some of their different calls that they do so that even if you don't get to get up close and see them, you'll be able to hear them, identify them, um, and learn more about them because they're really cool creatures that have a pretty important purpose um, that they serve while they're out there doing their thing. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, frogs and toads are amphibians. Um, sometimes people do get a little bit confused about amphibians, get them confused with reptiles, um, but there are some pretty important differences in between the two. So reptiles, first off, they have scales. They have scales all over their body. They do breathe with lungs the whole entire time. And those are gonna be animals like turtles and lizards, crocodiles, alligators, and snakes. Those are some um, reptiles. On the other hand, we have amphibians. Amphibians do not have any scales on their body. Those are gonna be things like salamanders, frogs and toads, and this weird group called Sicilians. So Sicilians aren't a group that we have here in Kansas, but they're really weird and kind of cool, and I just wanted to briefly mention them. Um, so again, they don't have any scales on them. Um, you can see, especially with the salamanders, they look kind of like lizards with their body shape, but again, no scales. They have really thin, moist, kind of wet skin, sometimes a little bit slimy, and um, they have a really important life cycle that we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, with their skin being so thin, they can actually breathe through it and even drink water through it. So if you can imagine like a little toad or frog, they don't drink water with their mouths like we do. They literally will like just hop into some water, take it in through their skin, and they're good to go, which is pretty impressive. But as you can imagine, if that maybe body of water is kind of gross, maybe a little bit polluted, that can easily cause some issues. Um, so these guys are considered to be um, indicator species. All amphibians are considered to be indicator species as a whole because they can really tell us if something's going wrong in an environment and in an ecosystem. Because if they're not there and they used to be, that means that other animals might be um, begin to be affected by whatever pollution or harm is happening in that ecosystem. So they have a really, really important role that they serve for us. So we got salamanders, frogs, Sicilians, which look like these weird little worm things, but they are also amphibians too. So I mentioned that they have a life cycle. They go through metamorphosis. And this is a pretty important trait for being an amphibian that definitely separates them from reptiles. So they do start out in eggs. Um, you can imagine like a bird egg. So like a chicken egg, um, reptiles like snakes, they will also have eggs that kind of have a leathery shell instead of like a hard chicken egg shell. Um, but these guys, these amphibians, they don't have a shell on their egg whatsoever. And so that means that they can actually dry out since there's nothing protecting them. So they have to lay their eggs in the water. All amphibians are gonna lay their eggs in the water. That's super duper important for them. Once they hatch, they will be some kind of larva. So for frogs and toads, that's going to be a tadpole. Um, I'm sure most of us have heard of tadpoles or polywogs, you know, whatever. And that is going to be the baby form 
the um, larva form of a frog and a toad. So they will often cling to plants. Um, they can also swim around. They use that tail that they have to swim around. And really important is they actually breathe with gills whenever they're in the water. So whenever they're a tadpole, they have gills like fish do, and that's how they breathe. Now, as they grow up for frogs and toads, they start to grow legs. Um, so they will have just the two little back legs, and then eventually they will start to grow their front legs, and then something kind of starts disappearing. So their tail actually starts kind of shrinking and getting shorter and eventually completely disappears. Now that kind of shows you that they are ready to come out of the water. And when they come out of the water, they don't have gills anymore either. They actually do develop lungs so that they can breathe on land. So that's a really, really big change that all happens in a pretty short time period, uh, which is really really cool like you have started out breathing water and now all of a sudden you can breathe air like that's pretty awesome so they make a lot of different changes pretty quickly now a little bit about the difference between frogs and toads because uh, there are some pretty key differences just by looking at them uh, that you can really pretty easily tell them apart and a lot of you probably already know these. So if you're looking at these two pictures, you may notice a few differences and already be able to tell me which one's a toad. So a toad has usually some shorter legs and is very, very bumpy and warty. Uh, a lot of times I also feel like they look grumpier, uh, but I don't think that's necessarily a characteristic that you can call for sure, but I think they look grumpier. Uh, if you look at the frog, they have a lot longer, more slender legs, and those legs are very muscular, actually. Um, they have a lot smoother skin, um, and you can really see it's not very bumpy. Now, that's not all frogs. Later, you'll see a frog that actually does have some bumpy skin, but in general, they're thought to have smoother skin, be a lot more slender, and not quite as chunky as toads are. Now, those leg lengths are actually pretty important. So we're gonna watch a short little video real quick that shows you the difference in their skills. And it'll just keep looping. So as you can see, that frog is able to loop pretty far and you can see those back legs stretching out. Um, toad, not so much. It just kind of hops forward and that's pretty characteristic for um, frogs versus toads. Um, it's just like they're hopping versus leaping kind of ability. Now also in this video, I want you to notice you look at the toad and you might see kind of like a weird lump behind its eyeball. So that lump is called a parotid gland. It looks kind of like a little bean shape right behind his eyeball. And that actually helps him to still have really good defense against predators, even though he can't jump as far away as our frog friend or be as quick as our frog friend can. So that little parotid gland on the toad actually has some toxins in it. And those toxins make uh, whatever tries to eat them want to spit them out because it tastes really, really gross, really bitter. And so that helps protect all of the toads, even if they can't get away like our frog friends can. Another difference is just in their eggs. So they still lay eggs, turn into tadpoles, all that kind of stuff. But with frogs, they usually lay their eggs um, in little single eggs or in a big cluster, in like a big pile in the water. Whereas toad eggs, they actually lay them in strings. So if you can imagine like a string of pearls, that's what toad eggs usually look like in the water. So even without seeing the toad or the frog, you can maybe get an idea of kind of what kind of animal laid those eggs, especially if you see them in those, those nice little strands. You're gonna be like, oh, that's, that's a toad. I know that now. <laughs> and so they lay a bunch of eggs. Some species like the bullfrog, um, one female, so one mom frog will lay like 20,000 eggs. So they can lay a ton of eggs. Um, and just a one body of water. So it's pretty impressive. Now, as we move on, we're gonna go into sp some specific species that we have here in Kansas and some that you can actually find around the Wichita area. 
So if you have a body of water around you or one that you can easily get to, uh, you might be able to see some of those guys or since it's now springtime, you might be able to hear them start calling. So we are gonna learn some of their calls of some of the more popular frogs that, and toads that we have in this area. So that even if you don't see them, you might be able to identify them and know what's around you. Now, of course, they are only the males calling. Uh, the males are calling to be able to attract the females um, so that they can lay eggs and have uh, little baby frogs and toads all over the place. So first off, we're gonna start with the Plains Leopard Frog. This is a frog that you can find pretty much statewide, and they're really common around here. We, I've seen a ton of them out in Chisholm Creek Park um, that the Great Plains Nature Center sits on. Um, they love sitting on the little wetland areas where there's all that mud when some of the water has disappeared. Um, so you can find them out here pretty often. Uh, these are frogs that are usually pretty easy to identify. They're kind of a bigger frog, so their body might be about that long. Um, legs will still be even longer, kind of go back that far. Um, and they, of course, are called a leopard frog because they have all those little spots on their body. So they have spots kind of like a leopard. Uh, there is another species of leopard frog, but it's not as common around this area. So we are going to go ahead and hear what this guy sounds like. And keep in mind, not all frogs and toads and most um, frogs and toads don't actually rib it. So we're going to hear some interesting noises today. Number eight, Plains Leopard Frog, Rana Blairi. So there's some other frogs calling in the background. That's not the leopard frog. It's that weird chuckling noise in the front. That chuck, 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 chuck. So that is the plain leopard frog. So it does sound kind of like a chuckle or a bark. Sometimes it reminds me a little bit of a hyena. In those weird gurgling noises. So yeah, kind of some uh, strange call. And I will mention too, um, whenever you have a bunch of frogs calling all at once, that's called a chorus. And that's when you actually can't just like count the frogs and count how many are calling. It can almost be deafening how loud they are. Um, so in the background, you may have heard a chorus of different kinds of frogs, but you could just hear that one leopard frog calling in the front. So that wasn't a chorus. On to our next frog. This is a frog that would be a little bit harder to find um, just because of its size and also it does have some pretty good camouflage. This is the Blanchard's Cricket Frog. Now these guys are really tiny. They're one of our smallest vertebrates or animals with a backbone that we have in North America and it's only an inch and a half in length. So like that big, they're super duper small. Um, so you might not be able to see them, but you can definitely hear them because they are very, very loud. Again, especially if they're in a chorus and there's just like hundreds of them all at once, it, it will be deafening. It'll be like you're going to like a concert or something and your ears are ringing afterwards. So we will go ahead and hear what this little guy says. Oh, and quickly, if you look in between their eyes, it looks kind of like a little heart shape or a little like triangle shape. Uh, that's one way that you can actually identify these guys is by that little marking in between their eyes on the back of their head. Number 31, Northern Cricket Frog, Acris crepitans. So not only are they called a cricket frog because of their size a little bit, but mostly because of their call. It sounds like a bunch of crickets rubbing their legs together and making that noise. Uh, you can also describe it as like if you had two marbles and you clapped them together, it would kind of sound like this too. That would be a full chorus of them where you like literally have no idea how many there are. There's just a lot. All 
All right, and even though these guys are super tiny and only an inch and a half long, they can actually leap up to three feet away to scare, um, to get away from predators, which is pretty impressive. And also you might notice this guy is a little bit bumpy, kind of warty looking. So this is one of those frogs um, that might have some kind of toad-like characteristics, but it is a frog, especially if he can leap that far. All right, to our next one. Now we are going to look at the gray tree frog. This is my absolute most favorite frog on the planet. I love them. They're really, really cool looking. Um, in Kansas, we kind of have a complex of two species. Um, and I say it's a complex because we actually can't really tell them apart just by looking at them. Um, their, their calls are different and that's really the only way you can tell them apart without actually doing like genetic work. Um, so you can see in these pictures, they also kind of have some bumpy skin. Um, and you can see one is gray, and then the other one is like this bright fluorescent green. And so these guys can actually change color and are really, really good at camouflage for that reason. Um, so they can't just change color really quickly. It does take a little while to change color, but they can blend in with like bark one day and then maybe the leaves another day. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool. You can also notice on this other picture to the right, they have a bright yellow in between their legs. And so that actually also helps them whenever they're trying to get away from predators. So if you can imagine this gray tree frog trying to hop away and it's leaping really fast, trying to get away from, oh, let's say a snake or a bird, something that's coming after it. And then so it's flashing that bright yellow every single time it jumps and its legs go out like this. And then all of a sudden it finds a good place to camouflage and it stops and it just completely covers up and it pulls those legs in tight. Whenever it pulls those legs in tight like that, you can't see that bright yellow anymore. So more than likely that predator was looking at the bright yellow color and now they can't see it anymore. So it actually makes it to where they lose the frog since they lost what they were actually staring at and keeping track of. So it's pretty handy. And now we'll go ahead and hear this guy. This is one that you'll normally hear Number around 20, like trees. Gray tree, tree frog, Hyla versicolor. So again, a couple other frogs in the background, but the gray tree frog is that trill noise. It's very loud. So they are pretty cool sounding. Next, we have the American bullfrog. A lot of people have heard of these, maybe seen these. They are absolutely giant. They are the largest frog that we have in Kansas, and I believe North America, but you might have to fact check me on that one. They are huge. They are absolutely huge. So they will be about six inches in length, not counting their legs. Their legs can be really, really long. Um, so long and sometimes meaty, in fact, that a lot of places actually consider them a game species. So people can go out hunting for them and will often cook up their legs. So if you've ever heard of frog legs, usually they're going to be bullfrog legs because they're the only ones around here that have big enough and meaty enough legs to, for people to actually eat them. So in some places, these are considered an invasive species. Um, not here in Kansas, they are native, but other places they've kind of taken over. Um, they compete really well with native frogs because they are really big, they're really, really good at eating stuff, and will basically eat whatever fits in their mouth, even if that's other frogs. So they are a voracious <laughs> predator and really, really good at catching things. And you can see they have those big eyes on top of their head so that just their eyes can be sticking out above the water. They can see everything and still have their body hidden. Um, on the right side, you have one of the bullfrog tadpoles. That is a huge tadpole. That thing is absolutely enormous. And so these are just really, really big creatures. 
Um, so you maybe have heard this call before, but not known what it is. So hopefully now you'll know. Number one, bullfrog, Rana Catesbiana. Yeah, that is not what I would picture from the sound of that, but it may sound kind of similar to something that's going on. To me, it sounds like a lightsaber fight in Star Wars. <laughs> on to another kind of weird sounding creature. This is the Woodhouse's Toad. These are also all over Kansas pretty much except for far, far southeastern corner uh, where there's, I think, usually more American toads. But these guys are huge. If you've seen a toad around here, it's probably going to be one of these guys. Um, I've seen some that get pretty close pretty close to like a softball size so these guys can be really big really chunky um eat all sorts of bugs and stuff so they're great for pest control like most other frogs and toads are um, but you can see on the right a little tiny baby one so after they come out of the water not a tadpole anymore toads usually start out as little toadlets and so these guys are really really small you may have seen these hopping all over the place um, kind of early summer, late summer. They're going to be everywhere. Uh, so they're, they're pretty cool to see. But they have a very strange call. So if you have ever heard this, hopefully uh, this makes you feel better that it's just a toad. So just prepare yourself. Yeah. So sounds kind of like a woman screaming. But it's just a toad. It's just a really chubby toad doing his thing. Just trying to find some ladies. No big deal. <laughs> so yeah, that one's kind of scary, but we'll move on to one that's a little bit less scary sounding. This is the Boreal Chorus Frog. These guys are the ones that you're probably hearing right now if you have heard frogs calling. Um, they started about a week or two ago, I think, since it has been so warm and pretty wet and rainy too. These guys have been calling not just at night, which is, you know, pretty normal for frogs, but even in the morning and in the middle of the day, we've heard them out here in the park. Um, so they are calling like crazy right now in our wetland areas and in Island Pond, all that. Um, so you can see these guys are also pretty small, like the Blanchard's Cricket Frog. They're, he's sitting on a quarter. He's literally sitting on a quarter, so he's, he's a very tiny frog. So again, might not be one that you see, but you will definitely hear them because they are incredibly loud. So these guys sound kind of like if you had like a comb and you raked your finger down the comb, it sounds sort of like that. And I love this video too because you can see their little air sac thing. So that is on their throat. And that basically amplifies the noise that they're making um, so that it's even louder. So it's just like a little balloon on their throat. Some other frogs actually will have two of them that come out at the same time like this. All right, and now we are gonna be moving on to our last frog that we will be learning for the day. Please feel free to look back at all of these um, and check them out if you wanna relearn them. It might be a fun activity to try to get, if you have some kids watching, try to get them to learn some of the different frog calls. Try to imitate them and make a little chorus of your own. Um, and if you do that, I would love to see them if you wanna share them with our Facebook page. So the Great Plains Narrow Mouth is a interesting little guy. You can see he, he looks pretty different from the other frogs and toads that we've seen. Um, this guy, you can really tell by his little turtleneck that he has. You kind of see that little line behind his eyes. So he has this little turtleneck. Um, some people think that that is because he eats a lot of ants. 
Sometimes ants would be crawling all over him. So we can actually kind of shift that forward and maybe get some of the ants off of his eyes and his face, um, which is pretty handy, pretty smart. You may also be asking why there's a picture of a tarantula. So these Great Plains narrowmouth toads are seen a lot with tarantulas. And they think that it's because, you know, the narrowmouth toad likes to eat a lot of really small insects that maybe could get on the tarantula and harm it. And in return, because the toad is doing that, the frog is doing that, they think that the tarantula actually protects the little narrow mouth, uh, which is a pretty cool little beneficial relationship to have. Um, and if you were having trouble seeing the Great Plains narrow mouth, because they have some good camouflage, there is that little red arrow that's pointing to them. So if you ever happen to lip up, lift up a rock and see a tarantula, maybe see if there's a narrow mouth in there. You just never know. And this last call is one of my favorites. And, uh, this is another one you just have to kind of prepare yourself for. Um, so here we go. This is the Great Plains narrowmouth. Number 42, Great Plains narrowmouth toad, Gastrophryne olivacea. <laughs> interesting noise. Um, so that is kind of all the species that I have for you today. There of course are a lot more, but these are some that maybe you'll be able to found, find in Sedgwick County, um, even just outside of Sedgwick County too. So I hope that this encourages you to go out because it's the perfect time of year to be able to find frogs. Um, they're still out there doing their thing and calling and looking for ladies. Um, and really based on what species you can find around you and how many species, that can tell you kind of how good an ecosystem is out there since again they are indicator species. So learning frog calls could actually kind of help you save the world. There's even a program called Frog Watch. Um, it is something that a lot of AZA zoos like uh, the Sedgwick County Zoo do where people who are citizens, it's just citizen science, go out identify frogs, see, try to kind of guess how many they are, there are and what the weather conditions are and stuff. They record that and put it on the Frog Watch website and you're actually helping contribute to science and to learning about these species and learning how well they're doing. Uh, so it's a really, really cool activity um, that I hope some of you will kind of get a group together and learn about. Um, but even if you don't, I hope you still enjoy just listening to frogs learning more about them, maybe getting to catch some if you're very, very careful and uh, pretty sneaky. Um, and I hope you just enjoy being outside listening to these guys. Thanks again from the Great Plains Nature Center for listening. We'll have some more programs coming at you the rest of the week. Um, so we hope you enjoy them and be safe out there. Y'all have a great day.